Today's program has been brought to you by Fairway Market, like no other market, a New York City institution that sells the best local, national, and international artisan foods for prices that can't be beat. For more information, visit fairwaymarket.com. Broadcasting live from Bushwick, Brooklyn, you're listening to HeritageRadioNetwork.org. We talk about food, we talk about music, with musical dudes, finger on the pulse, snacky tunes.
Welcome to Snacky Tunes. We are one. Uh, we got a we got a busy show today. <laughs> Happy New Year. We have our food guests uh, coming in right uh, now. Surprise, uh, you really didn't take an episode off, although you claimed that you were going to. I did. I took off the Momo thing. It was just a surprise for the new year. Yeah. Uh, we're very excited. We're actually in between holiday functions. We had services this morning, quick break. Now we're going out to Jersey to uh, see mom and dad. Uh, why don't we get everybody right in? We're very excited. This week is a jam-packed food week. Come on in. We got microphones for you right over here. And uh, first up, we have. Uh, uh, I'm gonna butcher this because it's Italian, and my Italian is absolutely <laughs> terrible. But Elisa okay. Rosetto. Well, yes. Did I nail that? It's it. Sorry. Yes. Hi. Welcome. Hi. To s- thank you. Welcome to Snacky Tunes. Greg, you can pull up a seat. Okay. Uh, we'll have uh, another Greg. We have another Greg. Yeah, this yeah. microphone is working for you right here. Uh, we are very excited because the fooding is back in town. Yeah, we're excited as well. S- starts Wednesday. Yeah. Well, why don't you take us through it? You're the professional. Well, we are do this uh, Brooklyn tour this year. We'll pay a tribute to Brooklyn uh, incredible culture. And we'll gather chef, uh, artists, uh, musicians for like uh, five days uh, non-stop Brooklyn tour. But we start with uh, uh, the Pico dinners. Uh, and uh, we'll have uh, branches at Night Talk Cinema with uh, Brooklyn movies, uh, then lunches at the flea market, uh, and uh, we'll close uh, our tour with uh, a campfire session on uh, the 23rd yeah. with uh, a lot of uh, DJs, uh, artists, uh, uh, chefs, uh, local vendors, and it will be like a crazy, a crazy feast. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. And everything yeah. starts on Thursday, right? Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. No, Wednesday, Wednesday starts. Wednesday, Wednesday, so, Wednesday. so what was the um, decision to shift to like uh, a focus on Brooklyn this year? Yeah, it's just uh, something that we noticed that uh, a lot of uh, new artists, uh, DJs, uh, chefs for sure, are uh, who with great ideas are now based in Brooklyn. And uh, this is an area where in the past uh, people were not... Uh, uh, is not we're not uh, coming so often, and we notice that uh, there, is, uh, there is this trend also in the east sides of uh, worldwide cities, like uh, in the east of London, in the east of Paris, mm-hmm. where all these uh, really talented guys uh, are uh, emerging with uh, super ideas, and so we're gathering all of them here in uh, in Brooklyn because they have like they have no restraints; uh, they are free to express themselves, and we appreciate this uh, freedom. And uh, because it let them uh, come out with uh, super uh, new things. <laughs> it's, it's this whole sort of across the board, Young Turks, new generation. Yeah, most of them are very young. Uh, but uh, we, are, we have also older chefs uh, like uh, Pierre Hermé uh, or Ellen Sandrens. Oh, sorry. And, uh, sorry, if you want, I put Yeah, we're just here. hearing phones. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, what were you saying? And um, now we have... Uh, Mainly young chef, but also older ones like uh, Pierre Hermé, which is was called uh, by French Vogue uh, the Picasso of pastry, so he's uh, like a superstar in France, and uh, a very uh, also Alain Sandrens, uh, which is uh, a bit more aged. But uh, most of them uh, they're really young and they have uh, great ideas to uh, to express. And also, most of them are based in, in Brooklyn, but we also called their Brooklyn-minded alter egos, and so we will join hands and re- do something special for us. Yeah, so you're bringing the, uh, I think, the Young Turks from London, and Naki from Chateaubriand in Paris. Yeah. T- tell us, uh, what are some of the events that you're really excited about? What's the hot ticket? Well, <laughs> I think the dinners will be amazing because you'll really see it's a more uh, serious thing. P- people will sit, we'll have a proper dinner, and so we'll have uh, four, m- four courses dinner with uh, champagne, with Pico flowing uh, every day. And um, this will be like uh, something unique because you'll have the, the chance to taste uh, recipes from chefs who come uh, from uh, both uh, the US and uh, overseas. So unless you travel and go to see them, uh, this would be... Uh, impossible to have here. I mean, especially uh, Spring, which is one of the hottest restaurants. Yeah, in Paris. it's in book. Uh, in impossible. Impossible to book. Uh, yeah. Which event is that? 
It's a uh, the dinner uh, with um, Daniel Rose of a Spring uh, Restaurant. Uh, he will cook uh, with um, Neil Arden and uh, Alan Sandrens at a mob dinner, Maimonad of Brooklyn, uh, which is the dinner that uh, we'll have uh, the third day. And uh, it will be an amazing vegan dinner with uh, this chef who will uh, do a vegan menu with a veggie burger. And, uh, <laughs> Which yeah. is amazing because, I mean, vegetarian dinner, fine, but to promote a vegan dinner with such high-level chefs, like that's, yeah. it's going to be a once-in-a-lifetime type of meal. Yeah, I think so, because uh, now vegans are becoming much uh, more numerous, you know. I don't know if... Uh, I'm sorry for That's my right. English. <laughs> That's fine. There's, <laughs> a mi- there's a myriad of vegans on the rise. Yeah, and usually people forget about them, so we had also the the, the eye on... Uh, we kept uh, an eye on, on everyone. <laughs> I don't know if they forget about them. No, but there are not a lot of vegan events, I think, all around. Uh, there's not a lot... I, I mean, and I might misspeak, and we might get one angry email, but I'm saying, like, vegan menus of this high caliber... Usually it's like a very specific type of, you know, potluck type of things. Yeah. And this is really going to elevate it to a whole new different type of level. Yeah, sure. And so I think it will be like a, a funny vegan dinner because the place is uh, incredible. It's been designed by Cyril Aguizera, which is also the designer of Mama Shelter in Paris. And I think it will be really incredible and you're also doing a dinner at uh, Nighthawk which is uh, fun because it's film and food yeah it's uh, not, not yeah it's uh, not dinner but brunch I'm sorry a brunch, a brunch yeah we'll have like uh, the resident chef uh, Russell Daggerty and um, the Ignaki Espitarte from Paris they will join hands uh, and they will use local uh, products uh, and also Nespresso Coffee to do this uh, um, like uh, brunch uh, cinematic brunch inspired by the mu- movies we're gonna show and uh, we'll have on Saturday, Saturday Night Fever, and on Sunday, <laughs> The Warriors. So. Oh, Sunday's The Warriors? Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'll take us to Saturday. I'll take us to Saturday. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but, I've, but I've seen The Warriors in the cinema. In well, the thing. Are you guys going to do two folded pieces of pizza? Uh, pizza? No, that's No, the, sorry. The opening <laughs> scene is Saturday. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> sorry. Never mind. <laughs> I'm Italian. I don't speak very mm-hmm. well. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so, uh, where can people get tickets? Are there even tickets left? What's yeah, there are some tickets left. I, I bought a ticket this morning to the brunch. Cool. So, there's still there's still tickets. Yeah, for the brunch, yes. Dinners are sold out already, but we have like a free list package, uh, which uh, includes uh, dinner, also um, uh, lunches, uh, brunches, and the campfire for $100. So, it, it's much more... Oh. convenient and uh, so people can also buy tickets uh, through freelist or uh, through our website which is uh, legramfooding.com and for people who have never done a lefooding or like a five day epic eating event what tips do you give them for like navigating net for um, how to handle it how to handle how to be ready for yeah. a fooding event well just uh, dress uh, smart <laughs> 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 and uh, with come uh, very hungry uh, with a lot of uh, uh, energy to dance to have fun uh, to meet new people uh, I think it's a unique experience uh, and everybody also uh, everywhere you go people enjoy it so much uh, so I think uh, just uh, with a smile <laughs> and there's also a really strong music element to it as this year yeah so. the camp first session we'll have uh, an amazing lineup uh, we have uh, Mike D Andrew Wyatt uh, uh, who will uh, perform with Isham Barouche uh, who is an indie Brooklyn um, artist and also Frankie Rose from Love Frankie who's Love been on the show cool. uh, a few years ago cool wonderful yeah. and um, and Dave one of Chromio so oh is he he's DJing or playing live um, I don't I'm not sure about DJing. it DJing DJing, DJing. DJing. Oh, okay I'm sure I'll be DJing um, awesome well thank you so much no thank you I know you. we have to turn you loose because we have <laughs> taken like 15 minutes of a PR person's time to look in the event so <laughs> I I'm have just, to rush yeah I, we can hear yourself I'm blowing up but thank you uh, thank, thank you, you to much. Anna as well who I know is dealing with yeah, TPA sure. stuff but um, best of Very luck big. we'll thank see you, you this weekend sure yeah. <laughs> champagne glass in hand cool. and uh, coming up next we have uh, Greg uh, Baustad who's going to be talking to us all about beer and how it changed the world and this awesome event happening at Public Assembly this Thursday what do you got for us bro uh, new track off the new Grizzly Bear Record Shields called Speaking Rounds uh, on Snacky Tunes Something to focus 
what makes each step worth time and regret still shows in the cradle of my unruly chest you belong I'm Steve Jenkins from Fairway Markets. I've devoted my idiot career to the old ways, the old recipes, the old tools, the old geography of where serious foods come from for centuries. And I've strived to make these wonderful things available to New Yorkers for 37 years. So it's a fait accompli for us to support Heritage Radio Network. And I hope you will too, and I hope you'll keep tuning in. For more information, please visit fairwaymarket.com. back oh man we are back happy new year happy new year you got you're gonna have time to uh throw your sins in the river between now and Yonker Poor. yeah the uh like river by our house on grand and uh i guess the water is like littered with bread of uh sins past i better make sure that my dog does not eat it uh well we are here with greg um i, I said your name right last time greg bowstead bowstead that's what i said greg bowstead who i always run into at tiki disco uh which was Totally nuts yesterday. Absolutely insane. But Greg is here. He is a journalist, a producer, and otherwise troublemaker around Brooklyn. You look like you were on good behavior yesterday. Uh, you've uh, written for Seed Magazine, Wired, Vice, Scientific America, NPR, and you are one of the curators for Etc. 2012 Festival, which is a unique series going on this week. Yeah, this week yeah. at Public Assembly in Brooklyn. Big shout out to Ben Sisto. Yes. Ben Sisto is the man. Yes. What is Etc.? Well, first, before we get started, can we acknowledge this room for a second? I mean, this is this is crazy. What's going on in here? It's, uh, it's, well, w- one second, and then two, I'll talk about it. Two shipping containers, a boarhead, and a dream. I'm sitting in between drums. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this show, and I, I never realized you guys were working under such duress. This is awesome. It's, it, so today, I mean, it's a big band. So it's a big band, and we're bouncing holidays and a work. It's a big day today. This is cool. So I'm sitting in between drums, and I'm talking about beer. Uh, Etc. Festival. It's going on. It's a week-long festival. I think it's 35 events. Big shout-out to Ben Sisto, indeed. Uh, He's managed to bring together a unique blend of the arts, of music, experimental music, uh, edifying talks, weird talks, talks about sex, talks about robots, and really cool late-night parties. Um, One event in particular that I want to talk about is How Beer Changed Everything, which is this Thursday at 7 p.m. That that's also my autobiography for my college years. <laughs> I think maybe a lot of us. Yes. Um, so no, that, that's all I got. I don't remember much more than that. Okay. So you know, so so how beer changed everything? It's it's pretty remarkable. The two folks we have, which I'm really excited to have on board, I pleaded with them for literally months to beg them to come up. Is uh, Sam Calagione, and he's the founder of Dogfish Head Brewery, and who had one of the most amazing New Yorker profiles ever written. Yeah, that's right. It's really cool. It's really good. He goes to the ends of Earth to uh, really create some positively unique drinking experiences, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, His sort of partner in crime is a scientist by the name of Patrick McGovern. Uh, Patrick McGovern is the foremost expert on ancient fermented beverages, um, which is a weird title, but it's true. And what he does is he uses chemistry and modern tools of biomolecular archaeology to reconstitute, to recreate literally thousands of years old 
beverages. You know, these are like artifacts. These are uh, using kind of DNA fingerprinting, so to speak, uh, radio, radio isotope, carbon dating. He really? Look, yes. He looks at, you know, tombs, digs, digs in Egypt. They, they are able to use traces of beeswax, hydrocarbons to figure out the recipes of these these beers that ancient people um, drank, and uh, it turns out drank in, in large quantity. Actually, I bet this I sounds bet. like the Jurassic Park of beer drinking. Yeah, uh, he's actually called the Indiana Jones of fermented beverages. Is I his mean, nickname. close enough. Yeah, exactly. Just you a few, yeah, just close enough. So, so yeah, they're they're here to talk to us, and, and they're gonna. We're, this Thursday, they're bringing up some of their unique brews, the, some ancient ones. One from King Midas. And they're also premiering, this is a special premiere of a specific brew that they're really excited about, they've been working on. It's a uh, pre-Roman experimental beverage, uh, Etruscan people. It's, uh, it has ground hazelnuts, pomegranate, myrrh, go look that up, M-Y-R-R-H. It's a crazy, crazy brew, and they use engineered yeast. And uh, people will be able to get sample that for the first time this Thursday. Wow, that's amazing. And, and how good are these things? Like, I, I understand the historical importance, but are these things that I actually want to... It's like Cascale. Like, I remember when that came out, and I was like, oh, I'm going to try it. And I was like, I don't really know if I love this yeah. versus just, like, I'm trying this. It's certainly an experience. And in my experience, my unbiased experience, I would say some of the brews that I've tried from their project are... They range from absolutely delicious to absolutely bizarre to just curious. Right. But keep in mind that they, they choose the ones that are a little bit most palatable to, to our palate. But, but you know, the, the interesting things about these guys is, you know, you have the founder of one of the fastest growing brands in beer, and then you have this esteemed scientist. They approach their work not like a uh, group of colleagues, scientific colleagues, or even like a... Um, sort of brand trying to target market the the next cool hip product i mean it's testament to the vast money losing ventures that they go on from setting out uh sugar baited petri dish traps in uh date fields in some remote field in egypt overnight in order to capture um airborne yeast to recreate the yeast that might be there uh for this recreated beverage to you know ordering uh, countless barrels of uh, Palo Santo wood from the rainforest in Paraguay. Oh, as one does. Yes, yes. You can Google that, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's on Amazon? I think so. Anybody? No, I got it. You got that joke? It's not very funny. Uh, it's, you know, it, it really is their testament to their to their complete dedication uh, to create a unique drinking experience. And it, what really drives them is the passion. It's not, you know, a lot of these things are very unique, and uh, they're, they're really just for the experience and try to recreate, reconnect to our inebriated history, if you will. And I, I mean, I like it. You know, again, like none of us are thinking. I also have the mind that if, like, if something was popular, it kind of would have been passed down and preserved for, you know, after a certain mind. So this is just kind of like I think it's a good way to taste, you know, where we started and to see how far we've come. Well, that's a good point. In fact, uh, one of the major points of this event is not only to taste these beverages, but really to get at a larger radical question. And that is, is beer itself, beer, responsible for civilization itself? I mean, that question has been posed so many times. With so many, and with so many different ingredients. Salt, cod, remember that series of books? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so I guess without giving away the milk for free, uh... (laughs) Yes? No? Well, well, the, the evidence is pretty striking. Uh, a lot of the evidence, particularly from Dr. McGovern's work, suggests that uh, hunter and gatherers, so our, our, our hominid pre-man species, uh, what, what they did is they started cultivating grain specifically to create a beer-like substance in mass quantities. And the argument suggests that they actually... Uh, abandoned their hunter-gatherer ways to cultivate these grains, specifically to create beer, and therefore became uh, they had to take care of these crops, and we, we evolved from a hunter-gatherer society to more of a civilization. And mm. that's the argument. And it's a pretty good one, and you'll learn a little bit about it if you come check out the talk, actually. They, they make a much more convincing argument than I can. Alright, so let's, let's give the nuts and bolts how people can come and attend this thing, uh, run it down for us. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's, it's 7 o'clock uh, at Public Assembly. It's free, actually. Uh, sample while they last and uh, it's going to be interactive it's going to be fun this won't be a lecture in the sense of a conference we're going to be drinking beer we're going to be laughing we're going to be you're going to have a chance to actually talk with these guys which is pretty rare at a lot of these events it's really rare it's really and that's the best thing a lot of beer nerds coming out 
Uh, yeah, I suspect so, yes. And what's the thing that you're most excited about? What, what's the one thing that people should really... Because sometimes these things can be overwhelming. What would you say the one thing that people should really go and look for at this event? I really want to check out this beer, Trusca. I haven't, I haven't tried it yet, and it, it sounds uh, from the uh, early accounts they're they're finishing up the keg now. Uh, I hear it's supposed to be really good. I also want to, uh, I want a chance to to be able to wrap with them and talk with them about all their beer exper- experiments that went wrong, and hear a little bit about their their oh, most recent trip. That's such the good stuff, especially with Dogfish. I mean, he is not ashamed to try something new. And have it fail just to try something. Uh, have you been down to the brewery yet? Or, uh, like down in, in Delaware. Denver? No, no, I haven't yet. It's on, it's on my list to do Road this. trip? Yep, I, I think so. Next All time. right, we got to do it. All right, well, thank you so much, Greg. We'll be there on Thursday. I'll be there on Thursday. Are you going to be there on Thursday? I believe I will be there on Thursday. Okay, so we'll see you there. And we'll, we'll try some ales. We're going to do a quick musical interlude, and then we're going to get the band in as we eat this delicious pizza. We're going to play another track from St. Kane, who uh, is the opening, uh, who alters the opening track, will be our live band today. And then we're going to play a track off the uh, Charles, ba- Charles Bradley record, which is also amazing. Uh, I heard sl- that album's a slam dunk. Wow. Hey, hey, hey. Keep on running 
All right. All right. All right, here we go. I mean, every time I think that we've had a band that is squeezed in here, <laughs> someone, someone comes someone in and steps in. And they fit in. Uh, we are... I mean, let's just go through the gear in the room. We got an amp. We got a ton yeah, of amps outside. Three amps. Three amps. Congas. Congas. Four toms. Four t- two floor toms. Two floor toms. Drum pad. Vibe. Vibe. Okay. Own mixer. Some other vibes. A bass. Uh, bass. A, a sound close guy. Sound guy. I kind of like that you described your um, drum machine as vibes. With his uh, vibes right there. Uh, uh, litany of pedals. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of pedals in here. I don't see them. Uh, they're, they're, they're there. Um, welcome to Snacky Tunes. Uh, our first fall guest, although it's still kind of summerish outside, uh, who are you guys? Uh, the name of the band is Sin Kane, um, Brooklyn band. I'm here with Mikey Freedom Heart Ish, the Man of Steel Aaron, and uh, J Tram. So, why don't you give uh, our listeners a little background on where you guys come from, how you came together? Uh, I started I started the band a while ago. Oh, introduce yourself too. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, uh, I'm Ahmed Ahmed Gallup, and I I write the music for the group. And I I started the band almost seven years ago. I was living in Ohio. I'm originally from Sudan, and um, uh, I put out two records and kind of uh, got picked up by by a bunch of different bands to tour. So I kind of put the the group in the back burner. But then I moved to New York. And I decided I wanted to move on forward with this project, so I revamped it. I met J Tram when we were playing in Yesair together, and th- through you know living in New York, I met Mikey Freedom Heart here, and he brought along the rest of the crew, Ish and Aaron Steele. So uh, when you pick up a, a group after you know you have two records and you go on toward the bunch of them and come back, you know what did you learn and bring into this time around that was different from the first time out? Oh man. Well, I I had I had like the blessing of touring the world and and really kind of see a bunch of people do the right thing and a bunch of people do the wrong thing. So, I mean, it it really puts a lot into perspective. I I know what I'm getting myself into now when before I was like 23-year-old kid didn't know anything. I was just kind of making music all willy-nilly and now now it, it it's giving me a lot of focus, you know. No, no names, but examples of one person doing the right thing and one person doing the wrong thing. You can choose which is first. Yeah, choose whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, well, but no names. We don't call people out. Mr. X and. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I've I've worked with a lot of really like super super organized people who just uh, are very honest and straight up. I mean, that's one big thing I've I've learned is to be straight up and honest. And if you're not straight up and honest, and it, it creates a lot of anxiety and tension. And that's just, I mean I guess that's all I can really say I mean the Fine. right the right the right thing is to be honest the wrong thing is to drink too much yeah. <laughs> he's talking to me <laughs> get it together Mikey Freedom Mark. God <laughs> uh, but so now that you're back in Britain so how how long has this incarnation been together not even a year I mean Mikey and I and J Tram we started playing together in what like December or it was January? After the, the only snow that happened last year, so it was either it's in January. October. No, it was the last weekend in October. Yeah, the twenty eighth. Yeah, we we start. It started a little like slow. I was touring with uh, Eleanor Friedberger at the time, and uh, so I didn't really, I didn't really have as much time as I do now. And then we had another. Ba- we had a, a, a few bass players that we played with, but Ish came through in uh, in May, and we've been playing with him. And then f- just for this, because we want to do something special, we brought Aaron along. But yeah, know. why don't we why don't we get it to you guys? Need like what ten seconds of noise and then start it. Yeah. How do you guys feel? I think we're gonna see. Yeah. Jack, how do we sound out there? Can I get a thumbs? Okay. All right. So let's get uh just uh for the room, and then we can start. All right. Thank you. 
You guys are going to do us a big disservice because now everyone's going to want to bring all this gear in because yeah. that sounds so good. It's like, go big or go home. It's, yeah. uh, it's one guy on acoustic guitar. Yeah. He's re- he's got a lot of effects. That vibes pad is really vibes putting out a lot of vibes. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, really? Oh. That vibes pad comes on the next one. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, that, is, that is amazing. That's a really amazing sound. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we're kind of live mixing in here. It sounds awesome, guys. So now the band's together. New record, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. The record's coming out next month, October twenty third on on DFA. Oh, okay. So how did that come about? Or what um, was the recording process? Since you guys have only been together for less than a year. Mm, well, I played drums on it, but these and, and other people came in. Yeah. Kind of I I recorded it pretty much by myself. Uh, I did like maybe like eighty five percent of the record myself, and then in the in the process of recording. Um, because I played so much with J Tram, I just kind of like had him come in and and uh, redo pretty much all the drums. And Ira from Yesera came and he recorded a little bit on like he redid some bass. And my friend George Twin Shadow, he ripped a pretty gnarly guitar solo on the record. And oh, you know, we, uh, special guest Shred. So, yeah. Uh, you know, it's That's interesting. Exactly it's interesting you say that because I was listening to the opening track we played, mm-hmm. and I was like, there's such a Yesera vibe yeah. to this. Um, but like in, in your own way, but the opening is just like very strong, Jay yep. Sayer esque type yeah. of thing in all the in all the best ways possible. I just tried. I I just kind of figured that's what was going to happen. So I just, <laughs> I was like, which track is it? Jeeper Creeper. I decided Ira Ira plays on that song. Actually. Yeah, which is the best way that you can have a Jay Sayer sounding song is by having the dude from Jay Sayer <laughs> play. That kind of yeah. squashes all type of. Uh, yeah, all you know. I just kind of you know call a spade a spade. I guess. No, it's good. And so then how did the DFA thing uh, come around? Um, shout out to John. Yeah, actually, yeah. I think John might be listening. And shout John, out to Chris. John and Chris. Uh, hey, guys. Um, what up, guys? They, uh, were, John was formed. I geeked out on, grew up listening to DFA Records, geeked out on John when he came on the show. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a lord. He's a true lord. Um, <laughs> well, what happened Lord's was <laughs> we, well, I, I, released, I released Jeeper Creeper and Runnin on my own and just kind of the whole Runnin thing. Uh, kind of, it it did a lot better than I expected, and just randomly in April, I got an email from him, and he was really interested in the track, and he said he wanted to hear some more music. So I sent him the record, and he really liked it, and it just kind of, you know, one thing led to another. It's pretty cool. I mean, is it really just that easy? No, it's it, <laughs> it's it's really not that easy. But this guy works crazy. I mean, like I mean, I mean, see, we like to. I mean, one of the things we like to show on kids like it that it is. I mean, you can play it off of like that easy, but it yeah. wasn't that easy. Well, I mean, the thing is, the record the record's been done for almost two years, right? You know? 
and I've gone through like many many different ups and downs with it and it is finally now just starting to like see the light of day you know I'm just I've heard the music so much and mm-hmm. playing it live has really kind of given it new light but it it's been done for a long time. I mean, what, you know, for musicians who have been at it, but maybe been toiling in a little bit of the unknown and now having, being able to come out on DFA, it's like, can you like share one of like your lowest of lows and like to the point that you actually got through it and got to the other side? Oh, um, how long do we have? Uh, <laughs> we, we got a couple minutes for that answer. <laughs> the lowest of lows, man. Well, um, I, I recorded, oh, man, I, I, uh, when we stopped playing with Yesair, it was kind of J. Tram and I. We we had like a year off before we re- we started everything, and I didn't really have anything in the pipeline at all. And the record was was finished, and it seemed like there was some interest, but nothing really happened at all. And I had like a few rehearsals with a bunch of people that didn't really work out, and I didn't really know at all what I was doing. I didn't know like if anything was gonna happen. Ryan here, my my roommate, like has always been like pretty encouraging and ex- like excited about everything I've been doing. But uh, so, yeah, I don't I don't know, man. Like it, it's when you're when you're around to a lot of like really creative and talented people that are succeeding so well, and your project doesn't seem to be succeeding on that level. It just it's a, you sensationalize all your feelings and you think like I had like you know eighty cents in my bank account and living in New York and you know was in a really crappy relationship <laughs> with somebody and. You know. So you're saying and roommates? It's all changed. Yeah. <laughs> roommates, bandmates, got yeah. you through it. Yeah, yeah. These are like my my. This is like my family. You know, these everyone here has really been super encouraging and exciting. I mean, I th- I mean, I feel like it's important to share those stories mm-hmm. alongside the yeah, I got the record deal that's coming out next month, yeah. just to kind of give a little hope to all the people who are writing good music and toiling alone. That like everyone yeah. feels those lows. Like there's not a single person that has not felt. That epic, epic, yeah. soul crushing low. I was I I once lost the Yesair band computer on tour and thought I was gonna get fired and <laughs> <laughs> it was after you said J Tram's pants on fire. Yeah, <laughs> how did, how did you <laughs> lose it? I that, said J Tram's pants on fire. I lost the band computer well, you, and I was. There's a, long, there's a longer story to that. So you don't have to yeah, we don't was, have was that part <laughs> of the uh, drink too much? <laughs> that wasn't drink too much. That was. D- that, that, uh, another <laughs> why don't why don't why don't, why don't, don't, don't and, and we'll leave it at that all right let's, let's, let's don't do drugs yeah, yeah don't do drugs let's rip another song how about that okay what are we gonna song. what are we gonna hear we're gonna hear running okay. the song you played a little bit earlier great
So many vibes. Can we get one of those applause sounds, please, from the room? Just that one. I there it I is. I couldn't hear the vibes. That was the problem. Yeah, the, vibe, <laughs> the vibes can be felt all around. Uh, that was amazing. Some New Year's vibes. Um, so you have some upcoming shows, right? You just got done with the residency at Zebulon. Yeah. yeah. How is uh? I love that place. And actually, your vibes fit quite well in Zebulon. It was. It was a vibe. It was definitely, that was, I mean, that's definitely what it was. They sell the best. Each time we say that word. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's shout one more shout Z. Out to caveman. <laughs> I enjoy their potato yeah. chips they serve at Zebulon's. They have certainly good bag potato chips. Really? Yeah, their yeah. potato chips are great. Are right? Those, yeah. Every week. The mozzarella sand, the mozzarella Yeah. Sand, like, they actually have surprisingly meat. secretly good bar food. Oh, yeah, they do. Really? Yeah. It's a bunch of French guys, right, that own it? Yeah. Yeah. They're French the French Bohemian. French Bohemian. Yeah, they're it's definitely. What do you say, French Bohemian? I just think like a carafe of wine in hand at all times. Yeah, you know, I think Zebul is definitely a place of <laughs> older Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. like it's yeah. a it's a movie thing, jazz DJ I mean, cafe. I mean, yeah, older Brooklyn. Yeah, older Brooklyn I mean, like five ten years ago. Yeah. We live bef- <laughs> not older older like shootout druggy Brooklyn. No. Yeah. We I mean we live right down the street from there and it's Don't always a scene. Don't blow up our spot. I mean, our so, spot, our spot's getting blown up by a wrecking ball in three months anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> the new Brooklyn. Yeah, that's yeah. the new Brooklyn. That's, the, that's that new. That's that new new. I was new new. About. So, uh, where are you? Uh, where you come? You're playing a couple shows in September, right? Yeah, we're playing with we're playing Music Hall of Williamsburg on, on Sunday, the 23rd, with Lee Scratch Perry, which we're all really Whoa. no big no big deal. No, no, no big deal. Yeah, <laughs> we're playing at Death by Audio on the 27th with Sun Ra, and we're playing the DeKalb Market. Uh, they're having a big blowout party at the end of the month on the 30th. So Who's playing the DeKalb Market Party? Man, you know, I, I don't know. Okay, that's, that's a uh, good place. Yeah, that place is. It's like this place. It's also Shipp- shipping containers. It's all shipping. Yeah. Have you been out there? Yeah, we go. I mean, Mike, Mikey lives right next to it, so we always grab coffee. And there's, there's this really awesome place that makes these like chicken biscuit, chicken yeah. biscuit sandwiches. Mm. Are so Can you please el- please elaborate? Yeah. Please elaborate. Like, is it the biscuit and the chicken in there? Or, like, what makes it so? Chicken's biscuit, the coleslaw. buttermilk yeah. biscuit with chicken gravy biscuit, and fried chicken in the middle. It's mm. a coleslaw. You guys cook a lot. You guys, you guys got your places to eat on the road. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot. Uh, Bills in, uh, yeah, in Brighton, in yeah. Brighton, England, That's is the only spot. one of the Bills. Yo, shout Bills. out to Sheets. Big up, <laughs> <laughs> up the Bills. Yeah, what's Bills? Bills, Bills is like a, it's like a, really awesome like a market, like a farm market place it's like or everything is organic and everything is really always changing big lofty yeah. spot you know uh, mm. they, they you can go in there you you go in there it kind of looks like um just like a a mark uh, like a a farmer's market um but with they with the yeah, with a lot of table everything is just really fresh and delicious I and mean, when you go on tour it's that's the that's the one thing that kind of blows your mind because you're eating like Mustard packets and Coors Light all, <laughs> mm. all day. Yeah, oh, it's a shot of uh, mustard right. and the Coors Light, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a lime mm-hmm. with a ketchup chaser. Awesome. Really uh, so let's get all the nuts and bolts. Where can people find you? Where can people get your music? Website, Friendster, uh, lipstick <laughs> and cigarettes <laughs> profile. You yeah, always make Friendster. that joke, and it always works. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new, hey, it's a new, it's a new band every week, and they haven't heard the other shows. <laughs> um, Check out some, our podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> Sincane.com. S-I-N- Spell, yeah. S-I-N-K-A-N-E. Uh, you know, Sincane Twitter, Sincane Raw on Facebook. Um, what else? Well, and then uh, DFA. DFA. Records, yeah. When is it? When's the release date? October 23rd. Can you pre-order? Man, this should be coming up pretty soon. Chris, that's a good question. Yeah. I know he's listening. <laughs> well, how about we say, about how about we say that if... Uh, the email Chris will put them on the pre pre order list. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he'll, then he'll uh, really enjoy that too. Release party? Dance party? October twenty third, uh, we're playing a show at the Brooklyn Bowl. Oh, perfect. So fried chicken? 
Um, oh, yeah. So much fried chicken. Uh, yeah. Hey, here, here's here's my question to you. What is your process of eating when you play Brooklyn Bowl? Are you a before show eater or do you do well, you gotta wait till after? after. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I really like the fried chicken and I gotta do that afterwards or else. Completely divided on this. I'm kinda <laughs> like a wingman during the set type of thing, just you know, in between. Yeah, I like I, I if get I greasy fingers. Yeah. I, get, I get a dozen, I get, you know, six on table one, six, six on table two. But yeah, that's it's so tempting because you're there for so long and you know you want to dig in, but that's Yeah. I mean, it is That's the reward. It is a very good place to eat. Three more songs till chicken wings. Yeah. Two more songs till chicken <laughs> wings. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm <laughs> at. One more song to boozy milkshake, right? I can uh, only I yeah. Well, I can't, I can't do that one. That's the ender. If that's I, it. If I have that then it's it's That's, it's the that's on the way out. Margarita in one hand, boozy uh, milkshake. Anyway, all right, one more song. Yeah, then we're out. Yeah, then we're then, out. then we're off to Jersey. Off to Jersey to good, the Ant's house for Rosh Hashanah. Thank you guys for all coming in here. This all was right. totally worth all the effort. Thanks uh, for wh- having us. Yeah, what's the last song called? It's called Young Trouble. This is a new joint. Oh, and uh, hold on, sorry. One big shout out tomorrow night up at Dinosaur Barbecue. Marcus Samerson and a whole bunch of Harlem chefs are doing an incredible, incredible, incredible food event. Check it out. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. All right. All right. I jacked it up a little
Thanks for listening to this program on HeritageRadioNetwork.org. You can find all of our archived programs on our website or as podcasts in the iTunes store by searching Heritage Radio Network. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Heritage underscore Radio. You can email us questions at any time at info at HeritageRadioNetwork.org. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization. To donate and become a member, visit our website today. Thanks for listening.